The first thing that we want to do in solving this question is take the initial velocity whose magnitude is 20 meters per second and break it up into its x and y components. Now, if you look at the picture carefully, you have yourself a right triangle, so we can use some trigonometry here. We know that the cosine of the 30 degree angle would equal the adjacent side, which is the initial velocity in the x direction, over the hypotenuse, which is 20 meters per second. We will omit units for clarity. To solve this, you would multiply both sides of the equation by 20. These 20s would cancel out. And then on your calculator, you could do 20 times the cosine of the 30 degree angle. You're going to get about 17.3. So this means that the initial velocity in the x direction is 17.3 meters per second. Next, we will calculate the initial velocity y component. So let's just erase this work right here. And this time we're going to use the sine function. So the sine of the 30 degree angle would equal the opposite side. Notice opposite to the angle is the initial velocity y component divided by the hypotenuse, which is 20. Multiply both sides of the equation by 20, punch it into your calculator, and you will see that 20 times the sine of 30 is exactly 10 meters per second. So this means the initial velocity y component is 10 meters per second. Once we have those components, the next thing you want to do is fill in the given information into a chart. This will help you keep the information organized. In the x direction, we have the initial velocity, which we obtained as 17.3 meters per second. The y direction, it was 10 meters per second. In the x direction, the acceleration is zero because there are no forces acting in the horizontal direction. There's no gravity, for example. But in the y direction, there is gravity, so the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What else do we know about this picture? Well, if we look carefully, we can figure out the displacement in the y direction. So in other words, we can figure out the delta y. Now, delta y is equal to the final y coordinate minus the initial y coordinate. Take a careful look at the picture and look where the ball is down here. We said earlier that the final y coordinate is actually negative 45 meters. And then the initial y coordinate where the ball was located at the origin was zero. So actually the displacement in the y direction is negative 45 meters. And we will be sure to put that into our table. Next, we will turn to the equations of kinematics. And we're going to be able to use the information we have in the y direction in order to sol solve the time of flight of the ball. So if we look at the middle equation, we will see that we have enough information to solve for that time. Let's go ahead and fill in the known information. Again, we're using the y direction. So we start out with delta y, which we just obtained was negative 45. This is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, which is 10, multiplied by the time t, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is negative 9.8, times the time squared. We will simplify this equation. We have negative 45 is equal to 10t. And then when you multiply 1 half by negative 9.8, you get negative 4.9t squared. Now, this is a quadratic equation because it has our variable alongside our variable squared. So with a quadratic, you need to get everything equal to 0. Perhaps the easiest thing to do here would be to add 45 on both sides of the equation. And by doing that, you have 0 on the left-hand side. And then reorganizing in standard form, you would have negative 4.9t squared plus 10t and then plus 45. Now, to solve for t, we use the quadratic equation. To do that, we should list our a, b, and our c. Now, the a value is the negative 4.9 because it's the coefficient of the t squared. The b is positive 10. And then the c is the constant, which is 45. Now recall the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus big square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. We plug in the known values. So we have negative 10 plus or minus the big square root of 10 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 45. And then this is all divided by 2 times negative 4.9. Let's pick up our calculators and process the contents underneath the radical. And when you do that, you get 982, which is still underneath the square root. On the bottom, it's going to be negative 9.8. Take the square root of 982, and you should get about 31.3. And then you have to split this up into two separate times because of the plus minus. So the first one we can do is the minus negative 10 minus 31.3 all over negative 9.8. Or we can do a plus. So we'll have negative 10 plus 31.3 
all over negative 9.8. Let's put these into our calculator. And when we do that, the first value of time is about 4.22 seconds. The second is negative 2.18 seconds. But of course, we cannot have negative time in these physics problems. And so we can eliminate that option. Therefore, the final answer to part A of the question is the 4.22 seconds. So that's how long it takes the ball to hit the ground. We come back up here and see what part B requests from us. It wants the ball's speed at impact. Well, let's go back to our table and fill in what we just figured out. Every time you find an answer to one of the unknowns, it's a good idea to fill it in. Notice the time in the x direction is the same as the time in the y direction. Now, to get the final speed, which is basically this right here, we're gonna need the final speed in the x direction as well as the final speed in the y direction. So we're gonna to have to use a different equation and we look at our list of equations and the best one perhaps to use for the final speed is the first one. So we're gonna calculate the final speed in both the x and the y direction here. And then we'll combine them to get the overall final speed. So for the x direction, the final speed is equal to the initial speed in the x direction plus the acceleration times the time. We know from our table that the initial speed or the initial velocity, I should say, in the x direction was the 17.3 meters per second. The acceleration is zero. So this whole term right here will zero out. And therefore we can see that the final velocity in the x direction is the positive 17.3 meters per second. Now for the y direction, we fill in the requisite values. The initial velocity in the y direction was the 10 meters per second plus the negative 9.8 acceleration multiplied by the 4.22 seconds that we just figured out in part A. So when we process this calculation, we're going to see that the final velocity in the y direction is negative 31.3 meters per second. Now to get the final speed, you're going to have to combine these two, but you don't simply add them. You have to draw a right triangle. So for the x direction, the final velocity was positive 17.3. So you'll draw a vector pointing to the right because it's positive. And then the final velocity in the y direction is going to point downward because it's negative and it has a magnitude of 31.3. The final speed of the ball will be represented by this resultant vector right here. We have formed ourselves a right triangle. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that the hypotenuse squared is equal to one leg squared plus the other leg squared. So go ahead and process the entire right hand side of the equation. You get a pretty big number about 1281. So we have V squared is equal to that number. And then to get the final speed, you just square root both sides. And when you do that, your final speed is about 35.8 meters per second. So that's the correct answer for part B of the question. Finally, we get up to part C and it wants the horizontal range of the ball. Horizontal range. We'll look back at the picture. The horizontal range is basically this X that's marked in the diagram. It's usually better to represent that as delta X. And that's what we've used in our chart is delta X. Now, notice that delta x would be the final x-coordinate minus the initial x-coordinate. The final x-coordinate, which is where the ball is located right here, is just x. And then the initial x-coordinate, if you go back up, remember the ball initially was at the origin and the initial x-coordinate was zero. So in this particular case, we can write delta x as just equaling x but we still have to calculate it. So which equation are we going to use? You might want to pause the video and consider that, but perhaps the best equation is the middle one once again. Now that's written in terms of delta y, but we can use delta x as well. So delta x, which we just showed was the same thing as x, is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time, plus one half times the acceleration in the x direction multiplied by the time squared. Now remember, the acceleration in the x direction was zero, so this term right here completely drops out. And therefore, it's gonna be a lot simpler. So x is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which was that 17.3, multiplied by the time of 4.22. So putting that into your calculator will yield an x value of about 73 meters. And so this becomes, whoopsies, that's a 73. 73 meters becomes the correct answer to part C of the question.